Good evening. This is Reading for Charity again. This is review six of the night. Getting all the ones we got done over Christmas. And war and peace. War and peace. So, thousand plus pages of super dense text. Um, <clears throat> what to say about War and Peace? Man, um, following up Ulysses with this book was a gigantic mistake because if I fell asleep a lot to Ulysses, I fell asleep even more to this book. Never has more words been written about fewer things. Um, it's, it's hard to talk about this book um, because it made such a little impression on me. Um, in the same way that um, you know, Possession is Brian. No, that was what I was talking about. Uh, in the same way that I'd read Possession and I, I finished it and kind of went, well, yeah, okay, that's a book I read. That's, that's, that's that. War and Peace kind of washed over me in the same way. It has similar problems to um, The Idiot by Dostoevsky. So I think this feels, it feels very much like, a, not a problem, but a stylistic th um, element of Russian literature in general, at least the Russian literature, literature, start again, at least the Russian literature that I've read as part of this. So um, the Dostoevsky, the, the Tolstoy, the, um, the, the, the Boris Akunin, which uh, is the one I just, I finished, is also Russian. They all have um, a similar style which is exceedingly theatrical. It, it's almost like the the books are written to be performed rather than to be read. Um, in the style of the dialogue, no one actually talks to each other. Everyone kind of talks to the back of the room, so they, they deliver monologues to each other rather than actually talk. Um, the, the events that happen verge on the philosophical rather than the novelistic so rather than there rather than there being a series of events which lead you through a story there is um, a series of events which allow the author to opine on an issue um, and I thought that the idiot was very obvious in that front very very obvious in that front Tolstoy well yeah no the second half of the book almost gives up on actually telling a story whatsoever and just delves straight into philosophy. Um, <clears throat> you know, almost to the extent where the unbearable likeness of being does. So an unbearable likeness of being is philosophy first, book second. The, the second half of War and Peace verges on the same thing. It's a hard, hard, hard book to read. Um, mostly because <laughs> it's not much of a book at all. Um, again, I went and looked up um, a whole bunch of articles about the book after I finished it. I always do it afterwards so I don't kind of flavour myself before I read the book. I don't want other people's opinions about it before I read it. Um, and I, I came across uh, a line from Dost, uh, from Tolstoy actually saying that he didn't think this was a novel at all. Um, actually, can I, find, can I find the line he said? Uh, no. No, I can't. Um, but if I recall correctly, I mean, Tolstoy actually said that he thought that the best Russian literature wasn't actually, uh, was it novels, he said? Weren't actually novels at all. So um, books that were written as novels, he didn't think the best of them were novels. That's a really clunky sentence, but I think that's true. I would agree with that statement that um, the the idiots, uh, War and Peace, um, you know, I wouldn't call either of them novels at all. They're more um, very, very long-winded discursive essays set in a narrative form. <laughs> is, is that even worse? I, I'm beginning to sound like an English lit student myself. Um, and War and Peace is very much like that. I mean, the, I've complained about the length of novels previously and how much can be chopped out. War and Peace could be reduced to probably 200 pages and still have the impact that it has over 1,400 pages. It's really not 
it's really not <sighs> yeah it doesn't need to be that long it really genuinely doesn't need to be that long um <sighs> actually talking about the book itself rather than talking around the book um the idea of the book seems to be that um history history proceeds regardless of man um and again this is something that quite a lot of the books i've read has had it's not talking it's not thinking about like destiny you know it's not you're destined to do this but um again with things like the unbearable lightness of being um the idiot war and peace um possession you know he's you know so many books that i've read have the idea of um once events are set in motion there's nothing anyone can do to change it you know it's um it's canute standing on the beach you know trying to get the water to go back you may as well have the same idea um trying to stop events from happening i i have always disliked that as an idea um i don't think it's true um i think we like to think it's true because it absolves us of blame it's it, it's very much the the idea of predestination you know if our lives are predestined then we're not to blame um, for anything that goes wrong um and with the russian novels you know the description of russian life i don't know the actual history of russia during the, the kind of the periods that they talk about um but you know russia from the books that i've read was harsh and um you know life was cheap and death was quick and easy and it was a hard place to live especially if you weren't in the upper echelons of society <clears throat> now in that case it would be really nice to think that none of this was your fault you know that the fact that you're going to get murdered the next day was due to predestination and not because you were a lying cheating philandering bastard um but i don't believe any of that's true and I think the, the it seems to be a, a particular Russian conceit that the inevitability of events is a thing, and I don't think that's true. Um, but I'm actually starting to delve into the philosophy of the book rather than, you know, um, actually making this a book review. So uh, I'm going to stop there. I'm going to stop there. War and Peace. Should you read it? Um, this is going to be another book where I think no is the answer. I don't think you should read War and Peace. I don't think you have to read War and Peace um it's an awful lot of words for not a lot of um actual benefit i would i struggle to even call this a novel i don't think it is the light second half of the book almost certainly isn't it's almost just straight up philosophy um but you know if you want to say you've read it you can go away and say you've read it um but it's 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 not a great book in my opinion it's again it's one of those ones it's worthy it's a worthy 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 book but it's not a novel very much so so yes that was war and peace that was a slog and a half a slog and a half ulysses and then war and peace i was an idiot doing the doing that back to back um next up next up is, was the department of speculation department of speculation this will be quite a quick one as well so again, 20 seconds, switch the titles, switch the streams, switch OBS, um, and I will be back. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for listening.